Welcome back to chapter 10. We are here with section 7. Um, you have learned the segments of a circle, so chords, diameters, radii, tangents, secants. So now we are going to put those into play and we're going to find special segments in a circle. So we're going to solve for those segments. So um, the first one, a chord segment, is a segment that forms is formed when two chords intersect inside. So um, when two chords B, D intersect A, C, I have four segments, chord segments, so I would say B, E is one, D, E is one, A, E, and C, E. Now, E is not necessarily the center. So just remember that E is not necessarily the center. It's just the intersection point. All right, a secant segment is a segment of a secant line that has exactly one end point on the circle. So remember, a secant segment has um, things outside the circle. So if I look over here, um, it kind of looks like a ray in which it has one endpoint. So one endpoint being J, and it continues to K through L. So my secant segment I could name as J, K, ray, because J is the only endpoint of that segment. Um, everything else are just points on the ray. The external, and that's a good word to um, identify, secant segment. A secant segment that lies in the in exterior of the circle. So just the part that is outside of the circle. So if I look over here, a part that is outside the circle, so I could say M, L, I could say that's a ray or just a core, or just a segment. So KL and ML would be my secant external segments. And last, a tangent segment. A segment of a tangent with one endpoint on the circle that is both exterior and whole segment. So that segment I might say is um, PQ. And I need to erase this portion because I know that since it's the whole segment, the only thing that it would look like would be from P to Q. A better line than that. And that would be my whole segment. So nothing else goes on and on. It doesn't go on, it just stops right there. Alright, understanding our definitions are very important for this section because you'll see them in the theorem. So, section 1015, I'm going to have two chords. If two chords intersect in a circle, then the product of the lengths of the chord segments are equal. So, let's look at what they have put there. AB times BC. So that is, this first portion is from chord AC. That is going to equal um, DB plus EB, or times EB. So I'm multiplying product is multiplication, and that is from ED. So you want to split up the, the chord segments, um, but keeping on the sides of the equal sign, the single chord. So let's look. A couple examples. The first one, finding X. So I have two chords, AC, and AC is made up of AE times C. So we know that the products are then equal to my other chord, which is DB. So then I would say DE times B. So filling in the blank, A, E, X times 
8 equals DE 12 times 9. Right, so I get 8x over here equals 108. When I divide both sides by 8, x is going to equal 13. What we don't want is we don't want to multiply x times 12 because they are on different chords. So we don't want that. We want to keep it with the same chord, x and 8. 12 and 9. Alright, let's try one more. A little bit more complex. So we know we're going to stick with our individual chords. So we would say PT times TR. That is going to equal ST times TQ. Alright, so sticking with that, I'm going to say X times, I'm going to put in parentheses, X plus 10. That is going to equal x plus 4 times x plus 2. So, because of the properties of multiplication, I get x squared plus 10x. That's going to equal, I need to foil. So, first, x squared. Um, let's do 4 times x which would be plus 4x um, plus 2x plus 8. And just because I have those x squareds, they are actually going to be nice to us, and they're going to cancel each other out. So I get 10x equals 4x plus 2x would be 6x plus 8. Subtract that 6x from both sides. I get 4x is equal to 8, so x is going to equal 2. Alright, go ahead and stop this video and try your next two checkpoints on the back page. Here are your answers. Alright. A real world example. Find the measures of the segments in our circle. So, Biologists often examine organisms under a microscope. The circle represents the field of view under the microscope with a diameter of 2 millimeters. Determine the length of the organism if it is located 0.25 millimeters from the bottom of the field of view round to the nearest hundred. So we were given the diameter of 2 millimeters. So this entire thing here is 2 millimeters, which we would also know that this portion, because my organism is located, 0.25, I'm going to take 2 minus 0.25 to give me 1.75, and that represents this segment right here. Alright, and because if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, the chord is also, do remember it is bisected. So I know that this portion and the organism are the same, so I can actually represent those as both x just because they're the same, and um, it gives me a variable. So I'm going to say x times x equals 1.75, the top, times the bottom, 0.25. So I'm going to say x squared is going to equal 0 0.4375. To get rid of that squared, I'm going to take the square root. So my organism is going to be about 66 centimeters or millimeters. So the big thing is representing, if you don't have that variable, you can represent those two because of the diameter. All right, here is your checkpoint. If you want to stop and do your checkpoint and then check it. All right, moving on. We have a secant segment theorem. And so we are dealing with two secants. 
in this picture. So if two secants intersect in the exterior of the circle, remember they intersect at point A, then the product of their measures of one secant segment and its external segment, so the secant segment and its external segment, is equal to the product of the measures of the other secant segment and its external segment. So lots of words there. So this is how I like to rewrite it. So the whole secant, so I would say AC is my whole, so I'm going to take that whole length, times the exterior segment, which is AB. That is going to equal the whole, the other whole, A. E times the exterior part, AD. All right, so our whole times the exterior equals the whole times the exterior. So let's try it out. The intersection, intersection of two secant segments. So remember, it's whole times my exterior equals the whole times my exterior. So let's start out with one. The whole length, well that is 10 plus 24, so which would be 34, times the exterior part, EF, which would be 10. That's going to equal my whole E to I. Well that actually is 8 plus X, because we did 10 plus 24, so we're going to do 8 plus X, times my exterior, which would be 8. Alright, so we have 340 over here equals, distribute, 64 plus 8X. So I'm going to subtract 64 over here, and I'm going to get 8x equals 276, divide both sides by 8, so my x is going to equal 34.5. Alright, we're going to look at our checkpoint together. So I did our whole times our exterior on this side, which I got right here, equals my whole times my exterior, which would be right here. So I distributed like normal to get this next part. And because I have this x squared that won't cancel, I'm going to move everything over to one side. That's why I subtracted that 13, uh, 1,300. So I ended up with 0 equals x squared plus 24x minus 1300. Now you can factor or you can go into your quadratic formula. Remember our quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Alright, so I represented whatever comes with the x squared, which is 1, is my a. My x is my b, and my non-variable number is my c. And I'm just going to plug all of those numbers into there, so that's where I came up with this right here. If I plug that into my calculator, my solutions are 26 and negative 50. Well, because I can't have a negative length, I'm going to make sure I don't use that one so my answer becomes 26. Alright, stay tuned for um, our last portion of this video coming to you soon.